What's up guys, how are you all doing? I'm Paul the Tech Giants and welcome back to the channel. And today is a great day for me because I've just taken delivery of this, the LG G3 OLED, and I'm gonna be unboxing it and testing it out. Now I've been dying to get hold of one of these TVs for ages. So I've got to say a massive thanks to Peter Tyson who kindly sent over the 65 inch G3, which has allowed me to make this video for you guys. Now, if you were to purchase the G3 from Peter Tyson, they're gonna throw in a five year warranty free delivery, and they also offer buy now, pay later options. So there's some great reasons for you to buy this TV from Peter Tyson. And if this G3 isn't the TV for you, then don't worry, they have loads of other great TVs available. So please support the channel, use the link in the description to Peter Tyson, and once again, thanks very much to them. Now, if you are new to the channel, the way that we're gonna do this video is that we're gonna get the TV unboxed, we're gonna take a look around the back of the TV at all the inputs and outputs, and then take a look at any supplied accessories. Once we've done that, we're gonna get the TV up on the wall, set up, and test it out. Now, because I do actually get to keep this G3, I will be doing loads of other videos in the future, such as testing it out with the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. And because I will own this TV for long term, I will then get to also test out for any updates that will be coming in the future and generally how this TV fares over time. So as always, let's first start off then by taking a look around the outside of the box. So as we can see, this is the LG OLED Evo. 65 G3 because obviously this is the 65 inch model. Moving down, we can see just there, it does say wall mount bracket included. And that is because this is the G model and G stands for gallery. So it is meant to go on the wall, but apparently there is an optional stand available. Moving to the middle and we can see that this has the Alpha 9 Gen 6 AI processor 4K. Brightness booster max, that sounds promising. Thin Q AI, Web OS, works with Apple AirPlay, works with Apple Home. Moving to the top right and we can see 10 years world's number one OLED TV. Moving down from that and we have the energy ratings and those come in at an F. Web OS, 164 centimeters or 65 inches. And finally, we have a label there for matter. Next up, we're gonna take some measurements of the box, just in case you wanna transport it in a car or store the box somewhere. So starting off then with the length, and if you come in close, we can see that it comes in at approximately 158 centimeters. The depth, that's coming in at 16 and a half centimeters or six and a half inches. And finally, the height, and we are looking at 97 and a half centimeters or 38 and a quarter inches. Okie dokie, it's now come to the time to open up this bad boy. And when you get older, you don't really get a lot for Christmas. So for me, this is Christmas day and I'm dead excited. So let's first cut the straps. Then I'm gonna cut the tape. So first up then we have our wall mount bracket. And then a bag there with what looks like the remote control and a few other bits and bobs. Bit of packaging there. And if you come in close, we get a first look at that gorgeous OLED TV. Check that out, that looks nice. Right, now we got the TV out of the box, let's take a look around the back. So, starting off at the top and in the middle, we can see where we will attach the supplied wall mount bracket. Moving down from that, and we have the LG OLED logo just there, and then we have four holes where you can mount your own wall bracket if you so wish, and the dimensions between those holes are 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters. Moving on down again, and we have some cable management there that will run up to the inputs and outputs, and then obviously down and out to anything that you've got connected to it. Moving on down from that, and we have the fixed power cable. Yes, it's fixed once again, 
Bit of a disappointment, and I have already measured it, and it comes in at 225 centimeters. Moving on down from the power cable, and we actually have a button on the bottom of the TV. A little bit hard to see just there, but that is there if you lose the remote control so you can still access the menus. Moving along now to the inputs and outputs. So we have antenna in for satellite and cable, optical digital audio out, and then we have HDMI 4 and 3, which I'm pleased to say both are good for 4K at 120 hertz. Moving across from that, and we have USBs 3 and 2. Moving around to the side, and we have a further two HDMIs, once again, both good for 4K 120 hertz. And HDMI 2 is marked up as EARC and ARC. Then we have another USB and a common interface. Right, let's now move on to the supplied accessories, starting off with the wall mounting bracket. So what have we got in here then? So starting off, we've got a massive template. Now this is great. So uh, yeah, you will put this up on the wall and you'll know exactly where to drill for your size of TV. Then we have some warranty stuff and also some instruction manuals on how to fit it to the wall. Then we have the bracket itself. Now, good thing about this is the fact that it actually buries itself into this recess of the TV. So when you actually put it up on the wall, the bracket will stick out like that from the wall, hook the TV on and then push the bracket back against the wall like that. So it sits nice and flush. And then finally, we have our fixings, which is great that they supply them because you know then they're actually gonna be good enough to hold the weight of the TV. Moving on to this bag now then, and first out we have uh, what looks to be our IR blaster. And I did forget to mention there was actually an input there for that IR blaster on the back of the TV. Sorry, I did miss that. Then we have a couple of AA batteries, some energy rating stuff, and some other guff that you probably ain't ever gonna read. And then finally, we come to the remote control. So has this changed? And no, it doesn't look like it has, but if you uh, are new to these TVs, you may be pleased to know that this is a magic remote. So it acts like a Wii remote control where you get a pointer on the screen, you move the remote around like that and the pointer moves on the screen. It's an all plastic affair, does look a little bit cheap. I think they could make it better if I'm honest, but it does feel nice in the hand. It's got a nice little recess there where you can uh, rest your finger. So we've got this scroll wheel just there. And that also, if you push down, is your enter button. Got some shortcuts there, Netflix, Prime Video, Disney Plus, Raccoon, uh, LG Channel, and Alexa. Because this does have voice control and there is a mic at the top, then we've got directional buttons just there, your numbers and volume up, down, mute, so on and so forth. And a button there for your voice commands. Now it's come to one of my favorite times when it comes to unboxing a TV. And I know it's one of yours as well. And that is peeling off the protective film. So we've got a little tab on that corner, little tab on that corner. I'm gonna start on this side. Mm, nice. Right, we've now got the TV up on the wall and what I've done is used my own wall brackets. Reason being that I can't use the actual supplied one because I test out so many TVs, I need to use a universal bracket. So batteries are in the remote control. Let's turn it on for the very first time. Right, so I'm gonna go through the setup process for those of you who are new to these TVs. And first off, it says press the OK button in brackets wheel on your remote. And that is that button just there. There we go, that has now paired the remote to the TV. Now I'm gonna press the enter button again. 
And we get voice feedback on that. Now that's something new, we've never seen that with the uh, spinning globe there. So that's new, I've never seen that with the earth spinning there. So first off, we've got the language. I'm gonna select English. Now selecting our country and I'm in the UK, so I'm gonna click on next. So it's come up said about the audio guidance is currently turned on. You can keep it on by saying yes or turn it off by saying no. And I'm gonna say no, turn it off. Now it comes to how to set up the TV. We have two options. We have via a mobile device or just using the TV's remote. I'm just gonna do the basic method using the TV's remote. So I'm gonna go to next. Next up, it's the internet connection. Now I'm on Wi-Fi, so I'm gonna set my router and enter the password. Now I'm on the password page. What I've done, I've given the magic remote a bit of a shake and it's activated the pointer. And as you can see, wherever I point the remote to, that pointer follows and it is just so convenient to use. I mean, just speeds up putting in passwords and things like that. And I have noticed as well that the actual pointer itself is a slightly different shape to last year. Not a big deal, but yeah, a subtle change. Now we've come to the terms and conditions and what you can do, you can use the directional button to scroll down or you can use the scroll wheel, which as you can see is much faster. And now I'm gonna click on next. Now I'm gonna to go to select all on the terms and conditions because if you don't, some of the features may be disabled. Now I'm just gonna scroll down a bit and go to agree. Now we've come to the user environment analyst. And as it says, it will be set up automatically after checking the device connected to the TV. After connecting the device to the TV and the HDMI cable, turn on the power. So I've connected up my Sky box and I'm gonna click on next. And there we go, it has recognized that Sky Q box connected to the HDMI 4. And now I'm gonna click on next. Now it's asking us the way that we watch TV, uh, set top box only or Sky Q box. I'm gonna go for this, just the Sky Q box for now. And now I'm gonna enter my postcode. Now it's asking us if the TV is on a stand or wall mounted. Obviously it's wall mounted, so I'm highlighting that, pressing down on the scroll wheel to enter. Now we come to AI functions. Couple of options here, we've got AI Picture Pro and AI Sound Pro. So we can toggle those on and off. So we click on that and it will show us the difference between the two. Do you know what? I'm just gonna leave that one on for the change and uh, also, I'm gonna click on the AI Sound Pro. There we go, that's gone right loud now. Let's turn that down a bit. And again, for a change, I'm gonna leave it on and then click on Next. Now we come to Always Ready. When the TV is turned off, it switches to Always Ready to provide optimized wallpaper, voice recognition, and mobile device music playback. If you use a remote control other than the Magic Remote, wallpaper settings may not be supported. So I'm gonna click on Always Ready. It does say turning on this option may increase your energy consumption. Do you want to continue? I'm gonna click on yes. And now I'm gonna to go to next. Now we come to software automatic update. Now we've got a toggle there to turn it on or off and I'm gonna definitely turn that off. Now I'm gonna to go to next. Now it says about an LG account. Now you can sign up using a mobile app, sign in on the web or sign in on the TV. But for now, I'm just gonna to go to skip. Now it says install the apps recommended by LG. Now this will take you to like basically a sign-in page and that for Alexa, iPlayer, Prime Video, Now and YouTube. But for now, I'm just gonna go to done. Right, that's the initial setup all completed now then. And already just on this home screen alone, you know what? It looks brighter than my G2 already. And God knows how bright it will be when we actually test out some HDR footage. So yeah, a positive start. Now what I'm gonna do before we actually do any testing or go through any of the menus, we're gonna take a look at the actual design of the TV. So let's go around to the side and see what it looks like from here. And yeah, it's a lovely slim design. Not as slim as some of the other OLEDs that they do in their range, such as like the C3, but still thin nonetheless. And that lovely border on that, look at that, it's like a uh, brushed finish on that. Looks really, really nice. Real thin bezels now. I mean, just check that out. That looks wicked. So pulling back and uh, we can see we've got a little notch down the bottom there. That houses that button and also our standby light. I like that because you know, it is in the middle. So uh, yeah, it doesn't look odd at all. Nothing really around the other side either. Just a beautiful design. So yeah, when it comes to the design of this TV, I think it is spot on.
Right, let's next take a look at some of the menus. I'm starting off with the home menu first. So let's uh, use our pointer and we could give that a wiggle and point to anything we want on the screen. Again, really handy. Or we can use the directional buttons. So I'm just gonna press down and uh, yeah, let's have a look at the apps that come pre-installed. So we've got some uh, good ones here. If you are in the UK, obviously if you're outside the UK, they may vary on what you get pre-installed. But we've got Now, Netflix, then we've got BBC iPlayer, ITVX, 4 and My5. So those ones are great for your uh, UK catch-up services just there. Then we've got Prime Video, Disney+, Plus, Sky Store, Apple TV, Raccoon TV, YouTube, and BBC Sounds. Moving along from that, and we've got our App Store, which I'll click on in just a minute. We've got Sports Alerts there, Home Hub, Art Gallery, Web Browser, Media Player, Alexa, and then we've got the option to edit the apps list. Now, if we go into the App Store, just gonna click on that. And as you can see, we've got a whole load more in here. So we've got featured entertainment, game, news and info, life, education. So if we click on entertainment, for example, and uh, yeah, there is absolutely loads in there. So I'm sure there is something for everyone. Now I'm gonna move down from the apps, but this time I'm actually gonna use the scroll wheel. And as you can see, it is a real quick way to navigate through that menu. If you wanna speed it up, so just scrolling up and down like that, but using the directional buttons, move down now, we've got trending now, so that's gonna suggest things that are obviously trending now. Now streaming as well, so again, you've got Apple TV there, Prime Video, so on and so forth. So uh, yeah, not too bad and not too overly cluttered as well. Other ones uh, in previous years have just been, you know, walls and walls of it, but it's nice that it's been slimmed down a bit. Next, we're gonna go into the main settings. So what we can do is click on the main settings icon just at the top there. And that should, there we go, take us into the main settings. Next up, we're gonna take a look at the settings. So what I'm gonna do, grab our magic remote and press on the settings button just once. Oh, and we have a bit of a difference. So yeah, different layout there from my G2. So at the top, we've got some shortcuts there so we can jump straight into the main settings. It says about uh, our recent history, so pitch mode there. We can jump straight into the picture mode. OLED pixel brightness, sound mode, sound out, sleep timer, eye care mode, screen off, game optimizer, multi view, music discovery. So yeah, that is great. I do like the new layout. I think that looks better than before. So yeah, thumbs up for me. So now we're gonna go into the main settings. So I'm gonna go up to the top and press on enter. And if you don't wanna do that and say if you're just on the home screen like that, the other way you can do it is hold down on the settings button for a long press and then that will take you directly into those main settings. So let's first start off by taking a look at the picture set and see if anything's changed today. So we've got our modes there. So we've got personalized picture, vivid, standard, auto power save, cinema, sports, game optimizer, and filmmaker mode. Moving down from that, we have personalized picture wizard. Now this says personalized picture wizard can be set based on your preference determined by an analyst of image quality attributes such as brightness, color and contrast using AI deep learning technology. Depending on the picture mode, energy saving step can be changed and energy consumption can also be affected. So now you know, and that is something that I'll look to test out in a future video. Moving down, then we've got our aspect ratio and advanced settings. Quickly have a look in there. So our brightness stuff just there to scroll down. There you go. All the sort of regular things in there. Back and out of that, and we've got our color settings as well. Clarity. So yeah, it doesn't look like anything's really changed in there either. We've got our true motion there down the bottom. Personally, I like a bit of smooth movement. A lot of people don't, I do. Not bothered about a soap opera effect. Let me know in the comments section, do you mind the soap opera effect? It's a uh, bit of Marmite when it comes to that sort of thing. Some people love it, some people hate it. Coming out of our picture stuff then, and let's just go down to sound. So we've got our sound modes just in there, and we're gonna test out this sound in a bit. So uh, we come back to that. We've got a sound output there, so uh, you can choose to have the sound come out of the uh, TV speakers, maybe something uh, like a wired speaker or a wireless speaker as well. So uh, nice options there. 
and then we've got our advanced settings where it's great to see we do have Dolby Atmos which we can toggle on or off. Now just like the initial setup if we go down we have the installation type so uh, if you make a mistake on the initial setup and that's then say stand instead of wall mounted you can change that. Let's back out of that now and we're going to go down to our general settings. So we've got accessibility in here so we've got audio guidance, audio description, uh, learn remote control and uh, a few other settings there that I'm sure many people will find useful. Backing out of that and then we've got our always ready mode which uh, we've already turned on. AI service, let's take a quick look in here. So AI picture pro, uh, AI brightness settings, AI genre selection, AI sound pro, AI acoustic tuning, that's really handy as well and uh, yeah a few other things there at the bottom. Then we have OLED care, so OLED picture settings, so we've got our comfort mode, theatre mode and kids care mode there. Device self-care, so this uh, we can do the memory optimizer, so if the TV's a little bit sluggish you can run that, that'll clear up and if it's running in the background hopefully speed it up. Screen self-diagnosis and sound self-diagnosis as well. OLED panel care, so take a look in there. Pixel cleaning, so we, uh, if something's looking, looking a bit iffy with a screen you can run that, hopefully it'll clear it up. Uh, we've got a screen move mode there, uh, adjust logo, brightness and care recommendations. So moving down, we've got family settings there. We've got stuff to uh, do with the tuner as well. So if you want to, uh, you know, set all that up, you can do that. Network settings, external devices and system settings. Now backing out of that and we're going to go down to support now and we can see there we can do our software updates here. Again, I always put it to the off mode when it comes to the automatic updates because if you get a bit very wrong and you don't want it getting pushed through to you automatically so I would say turn that off wait for someone like myself to do a video telling you it's worth actually doing that update or not and uh, yeah just moving down for that we've got a few uh, regular settings in there we've got our home store mode uh, TV information so on and so forth okie dokie time for some demo footage then and oh my god already this is looking absolutely stunning now this is some 4K HDR footage, but don't forget this TV does also support Dolby Vision. And yeah, even just playing this for a few seconds, it is blowing me away. Just look how bright that is. Probably isn't actually coming across on camera as well as it is in person. But trust me, this is looking stunning. And we are just in the standard mode at the moment, so it can go even brighter than this. Now if I just quickly grab the remote control and uh, go into the settings, my god that is nuts. What we can do is uh, click on one of those shortcuts, so I'm going to go to the picture mode, and just look, it's like blowing out on the camera here, I'm going to go to the advanced settings, which is great that we can access that from those shortcuts. And we're going to go to brightness, and if we go down we've got expression enhancer, so we've got off, detail, and brightness. So if you go on brightness, it brightens up even further again. My god, this is just absolutely nuts. Let's put down that remote. Check that out. Now come on, that is a cracking image. Look how clear that is. I am just blown away with this TV already. Moving on to another piece of 4K HDR footage. Wow, check that out. Again, this is just blowing me away. It's actually blowing out the camera. It is that bright. Like I said, it's so hard to just get it across on camera how bright the image is. It is just cracking. And the detail is just nuts. Look at that. The colours on it are just, are just immense. I just know already I am going to be wowed by this TV. I think I'm going to be going back through all my old films again, as I do each year when I just get even more and more impressed with how far these TVs advance. Look at those amazing black levels, look at that. Moving along to another piece of HDR demo footage now, and what we're going to do is actually put it up to the max brightness that this TV will probably allow out of the box. So I know this is going against what most people would do, but we're going to whack it into the vivid mode. Oh my god, is that now bright? 
someone grab me some sunglasses. That is just literally blowing out on the camera. So I'm gonna have to dull it down a little bit. Honestly, in person, that's burning my eyeballs. That is absolutely immense. Hopefully when I test this out against my G2 OLED, we will actually see that brightness difference. Again, I just know that this isn't coming across on camera, but I don't think anyone is gonna be disappointed when it comes to the brightness levels of this TV. It's just so clear. Gonna have to adjust the camera again. It's just blowing it out. That is nuts. It's such a shame I can't show you some full on films due to copyright reasons. But what I may do in the future is just do a bit of a mix up, show a little snippets from films. Uh, but obviously, I can't do a whole load because I just get taken down or I get a copyright claim against me. Again, look at those colours. Oh, yeah. What a cracking TV. Let's move around to the side. Look at that. Still getting a wicked picture. I'm looking through the camera and I can just see it is not looking as bright on the camera as it is in person. Honestly, go in store and try one of these out for yourselves. You'll see what I'm on about. Moving on to some of my own 4K HDR footage now then. And this was just shot on a mobile phone. Nothing fancy at all. But again, the image is looking absolutely stunning. I can see it is blowing out on camera, but I'm just trying to get across of how bright the image actually is. So uh, some parts are just gonna blow out because it is just that bright. Otherwise, all you're gonna see is the room darkening the down to just adjust for what is on the screen. But oh my God, it is just absolutely stunning. I just can't believe that that footage is off a phone and it looks that good on this TV. The TV is doing such a great job with it, with the processing and just that immense brightness that this OLED is actually putting out. It is just unbelievable. I can't explain how good it actually is. I honestly didn't think there was going to be that much of a difference if I'm being totally honest, even though it says on the box about that uh, brightness booster max, but they ain't lying, it is a proper bright TV. So again, just look at the detail on that, that is crazy. Mad, mad, mad TV. Can't wait to do loads of testing with this going forwards. Okie dokie, time to test out the sound on this TV then. So what I'm gonna do is just go into the uh, all settings here because I am playing on the PlayStation 5 at the moment, just pressed on the settings button once and we do get up this game dashboard, which is great if you are a gamer, because uh, don't forget, we get 4K 120 Hertz on this, so you can take full advantage of the PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X. Now here, we've got things like the frames per second, like VRR, because obviously it does support a variable refresh rate on here, auto latency mode, we've got it all going on. If a TV can do it, this TV can do it all, trust me. So when it comes to gaming, this TV is top notch, but we will be covering that in a separate video. So uh, yeah, I just thought I'd quickly show you that, but what I'm gonna do is go into the all settings. Actually, just quickly before we do, just gonna show you on that as well. Might as well just chuck it in there. So we've got the uh, game optimizer there for uh, you guys out there who may not have seen it before, so we can adjust stuff in here. But like I said, we'll look at that in further detail in another video. So anyway, go down to the all settings and go into sound. We are in the game optimizer mode. Let's uh, turn that up and see what it sounds like. What? Nice bit of volume going on there. Put it to halfway. Yeah, that is uh, loud. Then we got music. Bit of a deeper tone on that. In all fairness, that is sounding pretty good. Nice bit of depth to that. Let's fire off that gun again. Sounding good. Then we got our sports mode. Clear Voice Pro. So yeah, a bit thinner on that, but of course it's to emphasize on any speech. Then we got cinema. Do you know what? I am really impressed with the sound on this. For a TV that is relatively thin, that is a good sound. Then we've got standard. Yeah, there's a good bit of depth to it, to be fair. Quite often, you know, thin TVs do sound thin sounding. Then we've got our AI Sound Pro. Well, oh, that's, that's a bit harsh on the ears, I'll, I'll admit. Yeah, very trebly there. 
but I'm going to go back to the game optimizer. So yeah, AI Sound Pro may be not the best when it comes to gaming. I like the music one. It's a nice balance. Yeah, and it goes really loud as well. I mean, we are talking like to the point like the neighbors are going to start banging on the wall in a minute. So uh, yeah, if you want some volume, yeah, you ain't going to go far wrong with this. So overall, I am really impressed with it when it comes to the sound. And there you have it then, guys. That was the LG G3 OLED. And wow, what a TV. I'm absolutely blown away. Now don't forget, if there's something that I've not covered in this video, I'm gonna be more than likely covering it in future videos because I'm gonna be doing loads of testing with this TV. So if there is something you wanna see me test out, then please let me know in the comments section. Once again, just wanna say a massive thanks to Peter Tyson for kindly sending over this TV. And yeah, please go and check out their link in the description. And if you have enjoyed today's video, then please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you already haven't for more of those videos coming soon and hopefully I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye for now.